Hi, my name is Mary. Today FM plays the best music in Lambasa. Today FM rocks. My name is Thomas. I'm here in Nakasi and I like to listen to Today FM because it's rocks. And my name is Milinia. Today FM rocks here in Singatoka. My name is Alkriki and Today FM rocks here in Tawa. My name is Mary Jane. I love listening to Today FM here in Bath. Today FM rocks. My name is Ilay Tiambal and I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. In the news tonight, Siti Veni Ramboka resigns as Sadelpa leader. NFP respects general election outcome. And election results break down expected soon. From the studios of FBC Suva, Jackie Spate. Siti Veni Ramboka has resigned from his position as Social Democratic Liberal Party leader following a management board meeting in Suva this afternoon. While the party board has acknowledged receiving his resignation, President Ratanangama Lalambalavu says Rumbuka still has outstanding conditions to fulfill before his resignation will be accepted. Catherine Krishna reports. As per Sadalpa's constitution, the party leader must resign if it loses the general election. I have resigned. Uh, my resignation has not been accepted yet. We We've uh, acknowledged the resignation by virtue of what is in our constitution, the party's constitution. But at the same time, there are conditions still to be carried out or uh, will be met by the present party leader. Meanwhile, during the party's management board meeting, it was decided that Linda Tambuya will be the opposition whip. Tambuya says she is ready for her role. Again, such a great honor. You know, it's been held in the past by, uh, you know, women and men who are much older than me as a young person, relatively young person to the rest uh, of, the, of the members of parliament. I'm honored. Rambuka says Tambuya has been appointed to the position because of a legal background and she will be assisted by Aseri Randrondro, who has been appointed because of his experience in the accounting field. Catherine Krishna, FBC News. The National Federation Party says it respects the results of the 2018 Fijian general election, but don't accept it. Speaking to the media for the first time following the announcement of the election results, leader Professor Biman Prasad says NFP is still considering its next step, including the question of his leadership of the party. Akusita Tale reports. The National Federation Party finished the general election race on third place. Although it increased its votes by 6,000, the party that promised to secure all 51 seats in parliament has ended up with only three seats, the same number it had in the previous parliament. We, of course, respect the result, and we see that as a lead in the polls. We are looking at it very carefully. If a legal challenge is merited, we will bring one. But if it is not merited, we will not. We are looking at the evidence and taking advice. I cannot say anything more about this now. Despite not accepting the results, the leader did not shy away from congratulating the ruling party. For the moment, and based on the official result, it is appropriate to congratulate the Fiji First Party for its lead in the polls. But in the same breath, Prasad took a swipe at Fiji first and its leader. The election result, in our view, is a rejection of the Fiji first party's dictatorial and bulldozing style of government. If they are smart, they will change the way they govern. The NFP also maintains that it will continue to push the party's campaign policies, which, despite promising so much, did not find traction with voters. For NFP, we did not get the result we wanted. We increased our share of popular vote, but we fell a few votes short of increasing our numbers in Parliament. We will continue to fight inside Parliament and outside for better wages for our workers, lower cost of living, better housing, fair prices for our farmers, better education and health, and better opportunities for our youth. The NFP leader also hinted that he will be considering his political career soon. At some point in the near future, the right thing for me to do 
would be to put my own leadership on the table. I have made no decisions at this stage about my own political future. I will consult the party leadership and supporters first. However, the party president says support for their leader stand. We know, I know, that he is not happy with the electoral result. But we want him to know that our party is solidly behind him. The legendary party does not look at the short term. It remembers contributions from the past and it looks to the future. The NFP members who have qualified to enter parliament include leader Biman Prasad, President Pio Tikundondwa and first-time candidate Leno Rangerenger Tambua. Akusit Tali, FBC News. Parliament will have a complement of 10 women in the new term, an increase of two from the previous government, and now represents 19% of the House. This increase represents not only the highest number of women representatives in Fiji's parliament, but sets a record for the region as well. Maggie Boyle reports. The new parliament will be boosted with more women than ever in the House. A sign of progressive politics, some of the incoming MPs are not new to leadership positions, having established themselves in their respective fields. I came out from uh, being a president for Rarawai Penenkin Producers, then I believe it's the same kind of uh, criteria, and I've learned so much from there, and it just made me strong. And I believe uh, if I can do the service for the growers, I can do the service for the whole of Fiji nation. And I believe as stewards of our environment here in Fiji, we have done a very poor job. So that's one thing I wanted to ask, want to start talking about. I want to start digging into how some things have been allowed to happen in Fiji that I think should not have been allowed to happen. And um, that's where I'm going to start, environment first. Uh, I feel honoured to be there representing not just women, but also other disadvantaged groups, uh, particularly vulnerable, disabled. With the excitement of being a part of the governance of the country, these debut MPs are ready, come what may. And I believe uh, this scenario where I am right now in the national level, it is for service. It's not uh, something that you should take it for granted. It is a service. You have to have a good performance of uh, service. And no matter what race or what gender, you have to accommodate them. Um, it's going to be a steep learning curve for me, my first time, first time in an election. Uh, and I'm very blessed to have been uh, elected to go into Parliament and I know that there's a lot of work. Our, our work is cut out for us, but I'm going to be all ears. Meanwhile, the changing landscape of the House of Representatives has not gone unnoticed. The total votes received by all 10 females is uh, 25,618 votes uh, and it's made up of five, F five from Fiji First, four from Sudapa and one uh, from the National Federation Party. That's the makeup of the women in parliament. You would already note that 56 women contested the general election, making up 24% of the candidates in total. Among the 10 women MPs heading to parliament, half of them will be first-timers. Maggie Boyle, FBC News. The Fijian Elections Office will soon update their FEO mobile app to give a breakdown of statistics based on their administrative areas. Supervisor of Elections Mohamed Sanim says they're doing this to accommodate queries being raised by members of the public over the confusion in divisional boundaries they covered. Catherine Krishna reports. The updated FEO mobile app will clarify the number of votes that were received from the different divisions around the country. We will keep both on the app. Uh, because uh, right now there is quite a quick uh, reaction to these things and we would like to ensure that both are there so people do not uh, jump the gun and say, okay, something's wrong, something's changed. We'll keep both there for a while and probably later on we will take down the FEO administrative boundaries and uh, re uh, keep it to uh, the... FEO uh, to the government boundaries. Mohammed Sanim says they use the FEO administrative areas to view the results. The government boundaries for north is the whole of Vanua Levu and Tavuni, but the and the, for eastern division is the is the islands and Nosori, right? But for FEO, the eastern division covers from Tavua right down to uh, Nosori. So this is where uh, we will be giving you the distribution of the data based on the government distribution of boundaries. 
Meanwhile, Sanim has also assured that 8,894 elections officials will receive their pay on time. However, payment may be delayed for some officials who have not yet filled out their FNPF forms and have closed their bank accounts. Election officials are being urged to check their payment details and contact their nearest FEO office. Catherine Krishna, FBC News. 18-year-old Osir Lawindor, who allegedly attacked a group of Fiji First Youths and volunteers over the weekend, has been remanded in custody by the Suva Magistrates Court this afternoon. Lawindor is charged with one count of aggravated robbery. It's alleged that during the early hours of Saturday morning, the seven youths were walking on the road along Victoria Parade in Suva when they were attacked by Lawindor and others. Lawindor in the company of others also allegedly stole a mobile phone worth $500. It is also alleged that one of the attackers was swearing at the Prime Minister. The matter has been adjourned to tomorrow. Meanwhile, Chief Operations Officer ACP Marati Nongiolevu says the investigation remains open. Still to come, Ravindra Kumar laid to rest. And 34 apprentices join EFL details after the break. Bula, never go Malakai Leloma, go in Nakas, on the Wagarong and Bula Fip, Nabondo and a Ser. Oya was it says, Lombasa, and the Teletan of Rome and Bula Fem, Nabondo and Ser. We have a Tumeli, a Kona Town of Hinatoka, Teletakina of Rome and Bula Fem, Nabondo and a Ser. Never go find in a town of Singatoka, get on the Teletakan and Bula Fem, Nabondo and a Ser. Bula Fem, Nabondo and a Ser. Family, friends and colleagues today gathered to say their final goodbyes to the late Ravindra Kumar who passed away on Sunday at the Nandi Hospital following a short illness. Kumar served for 26 years at the Fiji Med Service before being appointed as the Director for Meteorology in 2015. Philippe and I castle with the details. As it approaches, it comes the late Ravindra Kumar, commonly known as the Weatherman, was praised for contribution and the work he has done over the years for the Fiji Meteorological Services. I can say today that the nation has lost a very honest, faithful, sincere and hard-working man. I had the privilege of working with such a remarkable person. 53-year-old Kumar has been heavily involved in trying to ensure the Fiji Met grew to greater heights. He was of uh, exceptional good character and personality, and so his kindness, it is indeed very sad and unfortunate that he is no longer with us to pursue his dream and passion. Late Rabin Kumar did a great contribution during his work duties. And also we have enjoyed very good relationship. Kumar was cremated at the Wailolo Cemetery in Nandi. He is survived by his wife and two children. Philippe and I Castle, FBC News. More than $2 million in mineral royalties has been distributed to landowners this year through the Fair Share of Mineral Royalties Act that involves the distribution of fair shares of royalty. The Lands Ministry has confirmed the first royalties were recently distributed to landowners in Vatakola. Savarutambur reports. A total of $65,000 was shared amongst 100 landowners from Nasomo in Vatukola with names recorded in the Volani Kaumbula. I am grateful to this current government for giving us our shares of royalties and for also changing other initiatives that we will benefit from. Landowners at Nambiti Village and Nawelewu in Mbua have also received their shares. For Nambiti, we started with uh, $79,786. It's the fair share for the Nambiti landowners of Ndraketi. Uh, for Nawai Levu, uh, the total uh, royalty that was paid is 1.23 million. Meanwhile, Lands Ministry Permanent Secretary Malakai Finau says more mineral royalties are in the pipeline. The other two areas where mining leases had been uh, granted uh, for the iron sand mining in the Wotua in Inba, in the Bad Delta, and um, in the um, uh, 
uh, the mining is uh, granted to uh, line one limited in uh, the Batwe in the last mineral royalty payment was made in 2000 through a cabinet decision and eight years later more land owners are expected to benefit from this payment Sabaira Tambua, FBC News. Many new graduates are not fully aware of what is expected of them when it comes to the world of work. With employers raising the bar on the skills needed, the Fiji Commerce and Employers Federation President Himen Chandra says it's important that graduates understand the reality of joining a workforce. Kelly Vavala reports. It's been revealed that university graduates face a challenging experience when put on the field of work. Most of the times when I'm invited to the universities to speak to the students graduating on the expectation of uh, the employers of the new graduates, and one of the things I see missing or lacking is that they have no idea what's expected out there in the workforce. And I guess it is an absolute chance for you to go and understand and experience the workforce out there. Meanwhile, the International Labour Organization says job creation remains a priority for every government, including Fiji. The ILO estimate the global unemployment rate stand at 13 percent. But this Pacific, 23 percent. Some country even more than 50 percent. I could see many young boys roaming on the street, they don't have any jobs. I think Fiji, you have done a good job. Your unemployment rate is 18, around 18 percent. The ILO says it's also important that young adults become entrepreneurs and create their own business with the help of private sectors. Kelly Vadala, FBC News. Energy Fiji Limited has hired 24 apprentices to ensure they develop the next generation of skilled workers through high-quality apprenticeship scheme. EFL is adamant this will allow young people to be paid as employees while they learn on the job while simultaneously studying for academic awards. Kritika Kumar reports. The EFL says their three-year apprenticeship scheme will contribute towards Fiji's skilled labor force. We will have a trained workforce as something that we develop internally via this apprenticeship scheme. So they will contribute after the completion of their program in three years in a skilled workforce. Naveen Lakshmaya says this is an opportunity for the EFL to train and bring young skilled workers in the industry. The young people need employment. The EFL provides them the employment. So this gives them the opportunity and both in partnership to benefit the organization. Meanwhile, the director of Fiji National University's National Training and Productivity Center says they will closely monitor the apprentices. We are there to monitor your progress, whether you are here doing, doing your, uh, your experience uh, training or whether you're coming to FNU to do your theory training. Meanwhile, a total of 34 apprentices have been hired, where 12 will be based in Suva, while others will be deployed to other divisions. Kritika Kumar, FBC News. Coming up in sports later with Jamie Semiranranda and William Emata to return to the starting lineup for Flying Fijians match against France on Sunday. But Rachel joins you now with business. Thanks, Jackie. Good evening and coming up after the break. Pacific Trade Investment Australia identifies gaps in the region. And in growing Fiji, new boreholes to benefit over 200 residents. Stay with us. Dollar, I am Eleanor. For the best classic hits, I only listen to Gold FM here in Singapore. Gold FM, only the classic hits. My name is Yeni Rawa. I love listening to Gold FM here in Osuri. Gold FM, only the classic hits. My name is Dino. I'm from Africa, Coro Coro, Singapore. I love listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. My name is Salote. I love listening to Gold FM here in Osuri. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Bula, my name is Marida. Gold FM plays the best classics here in Altiga, Singatoka. Gold FM, only the classics. business tonight, Pacific Trade Invest Australia has identified a gap in the digital space for marketing tourism in the region. Now with the industry growing, it's vital that operators maximize all avenues to enhance the backbone of Fiji's economy. Here's more details. 
In an ever-evolving digital space, it's important not to be left behind. The way tourism is changing, all, you know, a lot of travelers, most travelers are now going online um, and they want to do most, um, most bookings or most inquiries themselves and all the information is online. And what we've found is we've found a gap in the Pacific Island countries that we serve where tourism is like a key. To address this, 21 tourism operators undertook a training in Suva today. So we see this as an opportunity for our smaller operators who have not um, been given the opportunity to get into that, um, that segment of business, uh, to find out what it is uh, that they can do, how they can improve their businesses through getting into uh, digital tourism and putting their products and their services online. Through the enhancement skills obtained from the digital tourism platform, Pacific Island countries were able to earn around 15 million Fijian dollars last year. And we now join Sharon with the latest from the money markets. The forex markets today, the US dollar index went broadly higher as investor sentiment once again moved downwards. Equities and key commodities, including oil, faced declines as traders recoiled across the board. All major U.S. benchmarks fell more than 1.5%. On the data front, U.S. building permits declined last month and their home building completions were the lowest in a year. Meanwhile, New Zealand's global daily trade price index fell 3.5% compared to the previous auction. This was a record decline for the 12th trade time and weighed on heavily on the commodity-sensitive Kiwi dollar. And that's it from HFC Bank for now. Binaka. Thanks, Sharon. On to the exchange rates as it was set this morning. The volatility of the foreign exchange market continues. The Fiji dollar fell against the Chinese yuan, the US dollar, but made gains against our trading partners, Australia and New Zealand, and rose against the euro. As for the commodities market, oil dropped in price to close at $54 a barrel. Gold closed at 1220 an ounce, and silver closed at 1432 an ounce. And in Goin Fiji tonight, 282 villages from Naratha village, Saoni, AOG, Gawali, Settlement and Rukuruku District School in Singatoka will benefit from the opening of Bohos. Permanent Secretary for the Lands Ministry, Malakai Finau, says this is a significant moment for those Fijians who once relied on unclean water sources. He adds 50 bohos are currently being drilled along the Singatoka Valley, mainly for agriculture and water supply purposes. The project costs $65,500. And that's business for tonight. Jamie joins you now with sports. Thank you, Rachel, and good evening in sports tonight. Fijiana 15s records its biggest win ever. And local teams ready for Pacific Cup. This and more after the break. Hi, I'm Jyotishma. I'm from Singatoka. I love listening to Mitch Shepherd. Mitch Shepherd is hot. I'm Charlene Robert, Mirchi FM, Rock in Lambasa. I'm Sonami, Nasodi Jackson, Mirchi FM is hot. My name is Raymond Dutt, I'm in Baba Singh Line, Mirchi FM is hot in Lambasa. I'm Pritika from Jack's Nasori. I love listening to Mirchi FM here in Nasori. Mirchi FM is hot. Mirchi FM, it's hot. Utility back Semi Ranranra and star forward William Emata are set to return to the Flying Fijian starting lineup for its final Northern Hemisphere Tour test match against France on Sunday. Coach John McKee is expected to name one of his strongest sides ever in a bid to upset the French for the first time. Vassal Prasad reports. Semi Ranranra and William Emata are set to add more firepower in the Flying Fijian side this weekend. You look across across the first two games and, and you know and, and consider that, that you know Viliami Mata and, and Simiran Draja had a week off uh, against Uruguay. So you know, it's probably a fair indication of the players who will be coming back in and Coach John McKee has also praised the local players who could be named in the match day twenty three against France. Pleased the force on the weekend for the Albert Sui Sui was, you know, close to our best player and, you know, really, really good work rate and 
and, and then, you know, some good defensive work and, and some really good tackling. And so with Dollar Koto, you know, he he, he um he, he played really well at hooker, you know, some a couple of couple of good runs. You know, he's he's um, really been our number one halfback on this tour. So yeah, no, the the, the Drew players are, are going really well. With the inclusion of experienced players, the French side is expected to come strong against the Fijians. Yeah, I think, you know, first and foremost, you know, the physicality the French will bring to the game, you know, big, big forward pack um, and, and some big strong backs in, in Fiku and, and Bastero. So. Odds are stuck against the flying Fijians as they have never beaten France in its past nine test matches and with just three days away, who knows, history can be created in Paris. Vashnil Prasad, FBC Sports. The Fiji Airways Fijiana 15 side recorded its biggest win ever yesterday, thumping Papua New Guinea 96-0 in the Oceania Championship at Lautoka's Churchill Park. The side outclassed the visitors in all aspects of the game, leading 53-0 at halftime. Wastel Prasad reports. Fijiana's 96-0 win over PNG in the Oceania Championship will surely go down in the history books, something the players were proud to achieve. The management for being there for us, uh, especially for our games, uh, for us uh, it's about teamwork. The national team is just a win away from claiming the championship title. We just tried to fix a uh, win back for the blackboard and that's what we went and talked about. Uh, biggest mistake was last week was the fourth and that's what we did. For PNG, there is a lot of learning to be done after the match. We, we know that Fijians always do um, offloads. Um, we, we were actually expecting that. Um, the night before, I told my girls that um, they're going to draw, they're going to do a lot of offloads, and we're going to expect that. So. Fiji plays its next match against Samoa at 3.30 p.m. at Lotokas Churchill Park on Saturday. Vashnil Prasad, FBC Sports. The Lautoka, Nandi, Suva and Rewa football teams left for Sydney today to participate in the Pacific Cup starting tonight. While the Green Machine is the only local team to have won the Pacific Cup three times, the others will be gunning to at least end the year on a high note. Russell Prasad again. The Nandi football side left the country with hopes to become the first local team to win the Pacific Cup for the fourth time. Uh, that, uh, going for another win uh, in this tournament. Uh, so no, uh, in Fiji not doing well this year. Uh, we hope to do well in the top. While the Jet Setters are set to dominate the tournament, Lautoka on the other hand is looking forward to finishing the year with yet another achievement. We have to win. Like um, we, we win the LDC, we win the league. And um, to going into this tournament, all of the players, even the management, we really want to win this tournament, you know, to, to end this year on a high. The star studded Suva side, which has failed to win any local tournament this year, believe they will do wonders in Australia. So we expect a lot of, lot of uh, uh, good stuff from them. They should perform well. The Pacific Cup begins at 8 p.m. with Nandi, Lautoka and Rewa playing a pool match each tonight with the tournament to end on Sunday. Vashnil Prasad, FBC Sports. The Fiji Police Forces Sukuna Bowl boxers dominated Army in the first set of bouts last night. Fights were held in 10 divisions ranging from the 60 kilo category to 91 kilogram plus division. Police winning six of the fights while Army bagged four. The finals are being held tonight. I still believe the boys. I still have faith in the boys that they can do their best. And now I'm missing uh, for the Skuna Bull team. And I thank the boys for what they achieved so far today. More disturbing details have surfaced in relation to Fiji Mbati and NRL star Jared Haynes' sexual assault case. Australian media say the victim underwent surgery after she was bitten by Haynes. And in today's play of the day, the touching moment Fiorentino winger Federico Chiesa ran over to his brother after scoring in a 3-0 victory over SPAL. The 20-year-old notched his second goal of the Serie A season and shared the special moment with his younger sibling, who was a ball boy for the match. That's it from Sports Tonight. Kelly joins you with weather later on and in new media right after the break, a look at some of the features of the Apple iPhone XR. That's coming up. I'm going to go to the market. 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 I'm going to go to the market.
Dorong orang orang nak kau, nak radio tujuan, nanti mahu ibit. Ayah umiannya, kita berorang nak radio tujuan, nanti mahu ibisi, ini nak toka. Gue ada ilai saya ingat toka. Orang orang ini nak nak ramak kau, ini radio tujuan yang ingat toka. Radio tujuan, nanti mahu ibit. We take a look at some of the new features of the latest Apple iPhone XR on tonight's new media. It's weather time now with Kelly. Taking a look at the weather, it was generally a fine day across the country with a few morning showers along eastern shores. In the west, the conditions were mostly sunny with scattered clouds. Eastwards from Back Harbor to Suva, after early showers, skies were partly cloudy with sunny breaks. And up north, Lombasa had a generally fine day. At Suva, southeasterly winds are at 15 to 20 knots with moderate swells. The next low tide is at 12.24 a.m. followed by high tide at 8 at 6.30 tomorrow morning. Sunrise is at 6.21 a.m. Looking at tomorrow, the current weather conditions should continue into tomorrow with a chance of overnight showers along eastern shores and in the interior. And looking on to Thursday, more of the same. And that's it from the Weather World, Jackie. Thanks so much for that, Kelly. In Fiji and Pulse tonight, we asked what activities should parents plan for their children this school holidays to keep them safe and busy. they must always have a responsible adult looking after the children. You also need to keep them very, very busy. Best thing you can do is take them swimming, go to karate classes, do some dancing, um, take them to the beach where possible. Parents can take them to the park, but look after them well. Our sports activities such as uh, rugby, swimming, soccer even, uh, and also if they can organize some holiday trips. They can organize activities such as uh, taking them to karate classes to keep them busy and out of mischief. I'm suggesting if our Ministry of Child and Women or social organization, they can organize some sort of common place for our children during the school holiday time, parents can pay little money or ministry can pay little money so we can go together. World of the Weird and the Wonderful, we show you a tiny island that was the hub for lumberjacks, workers in the logging industry who performed the initial harvesting and transporting of trees for ultimate processing into forest products. Recapping the main stories for tonight, CT Vini Rumbuka resigns as Sadalpa leader. NFP respects general election outcome and election results breakdown expected soon. Now for these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. To our poll question segment this week, we're asking, was the 2018 election campaign riddled with race and religious attacks? Visit our FBC website to answer. Before we go, our shot of the day was sent in by Tale Lomani and Josepa Jr. Louis from the Vui Levu in Aosori. It was taken in Ra overlooking the ocean. Remember, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page FBC News. You can also follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC underscore news or simply hashtag FBC News. That was your FBC News for tonight. From the team and I stay safe. Good night. My name is Nambualumbua, as Freni North is popular, so Radio Fiji 2 is also popular in all places. Radio Fiji 2 is the country of the country. I like to listen to Radio Fiji 2 to listen to Radio Fiji 2, so Radio Fiji 2 is the country of the country. I am Uncle King, Singer Tucker Town, a taxi driver, so I am famous for Radio Fiji 2. Radio Fiji 2 is the country of the country.